Hi everyone, uh, my name is Yinka, technical recruiter at Microsoft based in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, so getting to the question about the application process, uh, the first stage of course is to visit our careers page. So if you've never been on the careers page, uh, do make sure to you know, jump on there and have a look to see all the open opportunities we have. Um, regarding the application process, the first step of course is to you know, uh, make sure your CV is up to date alongside your LinkedIn because our recruiters do check that out. So make sure your CV and LinkedIn, you know, reflect uh, your current experience, past experience, projects, you know, some courses you may have taken, anything to just show you have the right competencies uh, to, to get into the pool. So after applying, uh, the next stage is for recruiters to review the applications and uh, the candidates that we do evaluate to meet the requirements for the role will be shortlisted and then they will get the codility challenge from us. Uh, the codility test basically tests your technical skills, your ability to solve um, algorithmic problems. Um, depending on your score, you know, if you get a really strong score, of course, you catch the attention of the recruiter and the, you know, the hiring team or the hiring manager because they do look at uh, the credibility reports and the profiles as well of the candidates. So at that stage, you know, if you get a good score, you catch the attention of the recruiter and the hiring manager, you get shortlisted uh, to go to the interviews. Now the interviews are four rounds. Um, Typically, we do everything in a day, so we'll call it the full loops. Uh, there'll be a combination of technical and non-technical interviews. Um, we have so many resources on the website uh, covering, um, you know, the breadth and depth of what we assess for in our interviews. And uh, depending on the outcome of your interviews, if you do end up being successful in your, you know, in the full loops, uh, basically, your recruiter will get in touch with you with some feedback and uh, you progress to an offer and uh, basically we get you through the background checks and then you join Microsoft. It's that easy and uh, if unfortunately you end up not being successful in your interviews then of course your recruiter will get in touch with you as well to give you some feedback and as well give you some pointers on you know what you could do better and um, how you could improve uh, for future interviews so pretty much that's what the interview process looks like thank you great thank you as a wind up, um, any parting shots uh, for anyone or general advice for anyone who's looking for a job as a software engineer or um, as a program manager? 30 seconds. I'll start with Duni. Um, yeah, sure. So I think um, my main piece of um, advice would be um, learn to solve problems. Um, and learn to solve problems in, um, in, in a systematic and algorithmic way. Um, there's a bunch of tools, um, whether it is sort of from um, sort of the open courseware from MIT or Stanford or whatever that you can use um, or um, other types of programs um, or Codecademy. There's a bunch of programs where you can go learn specifically about how to go about breaking down and solving problems um, and specifically sort of um, the the types of tools and terminology that we use for thinking about our problems. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people, you know, are very focused on um, or ask me a lot the question of, oh, like, do, do we take Python programmers? Do we take C sharp programmers? Do we take JavaScript programmers? Java, this, that, that. And the truth is that at the end of the day, on any given day, you can be thrown in and end up working on anywhere on the stack, right? So um, the Microsoft Mesh, for example, is platform agnostic. It runs on iOS, on Android, on the web, on um, on the HoloLens, on PC. And so um, Tony in his day-to-day -day job ends up having to deal with everything from C++ to C Sharp, to Java, to Objective-C, to Swift, to whatever else, right? On the cloud, you know, we're doing C Sharp, we're doing um, TypeScript, we're doing, you know, JavaScript, you know, we're building web experiences, cloud services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure Jacqueline um, um, can speak to that as well, but like the thing that sort of underlies all of that is learning about the underlying principles and the, the underlying approaches to problem solving that then allow you to pick up whatever language, whatever tool, whatever, is required for the problem at hand. So that, that would be my one piece of advice. I, I hope that covers also for Tony as a software engineer. Let's hear from Jacqueline. As a program manager, piece of advice for someone who's looking for a job as a PM. Okay, so um, I would say um, 
as a PM looking for a job, right? Um, I, I guess um, Aika has shared the, the basic things, right, that you should have done, so to speak, which is like, you know, going to a careers page, following recruiters and all of that. But in terms of the competencies for the PM, you, you, you would need to be able to demonstrate, you know, a lot of the a lot of the leadership and technical competencies you have. You need to have uh, an interest in learning, learning new things, exploring new things. You should be able to drive clarity in situations, so to speak, or clarity about things. Those, those are the three areas I would like to, um, to share. And then I would also say for people who want to be program managers, um, in Microsoft, typically it's kind of like a combination of what you would say someone is a business analyst, a project manager and a product manager. So think of those three roles that we know traditionally in our area and think of you, you know, having a wide range of competencies across those three type of roles. So your project management competencies will be coming into play, you know, when you're tracking, you know, the work that is being done by the engineering team. Your product management competencies will come into place when you're framing the vision of your product, you know, thinking like three, four, um, will I say horizons down on how this product should evolve even before it has been created being able to sell the idea to the customer and to the engineering team. And of course, the business analyst part comes into play where you're able to analyze the data in the field and all of that. Yeah, so that's it from me. Great. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, we really appreciate you taking your time to join this uh, conversation. We hope it was insightful and you're excited to start a career with uh, Microsoft. In case you haven't answered your questions or you have a burning question that you like to follow up with us, feel free to reach out to us um, on LinkedIn or any other medium that you have access to us and we'll be able to support you to the best of our capacity. Uh, wishing you a very nice uh, evening and looking forward to uh, receiving those applications uh, in the near future. Have a good uh, evening.